Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about the integer data type in C++. So in C++, you've got many different types of data and you're going to be having variables that can be grouped based off of their data type. And so that data type is going to determine what types of information you can store in the variable. So integer variables, they hold only whole numbers. So five, negative three, eight, and so on. So we have different types of integer data types, believe it or not. So you can take a look at this table here and you're going to see a whole list of different types of integer variables. So you've got a short integer, you've got an unsigned short integer, you have a plain old integer, unsigned int, a long integer, an unsigned long int, long long int, and an unsigned long long int. So what are the differences between these types of integer data types? Well, you can look at the typical size. And generally speaking, the bigger the number of bytes used by that data type, the bigger the range of numbers is. So when you look at a short integer, that is a data type for a variable that's going to occupy typically two bytes. So you can see on the table that the typical range of numbers that you'd be able to assign to that type of variable would be negative 32,768 to 32,767. Okay. And if you look at an unsigned short integer, it's two bytes, but check out the typical range of numbers. There's no negative numbers in there. So when you look at an unsigned data type, that just means that you can't store negatives in there. And so if you look at an int, you'll see that it's four bytes and you get a range of something like negative 2.1 million to positive 2.1 million or so. Unsigned int, four bytes, zero to 4.2 million or so, uh, and so on. Until you get to unsigned long, long int that can hold zero to a big honking number. I don't even know what that number would be called. So you're going to choose the data type based off of the range of values that you need to be able to store in that variable. And you can also optimize your memory by choosing an appropriate data type. So let's give you an example of some variables you could define as a type of integer. So for example, you could have uh, unsigned int days. Okay. You could do int numbers. You could do something like a long deficit. You could do something like a short int. Okay, so these are just some examples of how you can define different types of integer variables. Let's give it a name here, a short int named x. Now, you could even have unsigned short int x. Now, there are some ways that you can cut down on the size of your statements. So, for example, instead of typing unsigned int, you know, alternatively, you could just do unsigned, right? Maybe you say weeks. And instead of short int, you could do something just like short y. So you have some shortcuts that you can take to make your code maybe a little bit more efficient, maybe a little bit more easily read. And we could create an unsigned short integer, which we'll call z. And then we can assign some values. So how about we do days equals 13,000. We'll do numbers equals negative one million two hundred and thirty two thousand seven hundred and thirteen and then we'll do z equals um five say right and then we can send those variables to c out so i could do something like this i could say days equals days and then i could do numbers equals and then we'll send the numbers variable to c out and then we could do something like z equals and then i'll send the contents of z and then we'll compile that and we'll run it. So you're going to pick which data type you need based off of, you know, the values that you're going to be storing, you know, the potential range of values that you could be storing inside of that data type and, you know, maybe memory considerations. So for example, you know, if a short integer is only two bytes and you're only ever going to store, you know, a number that's less than 30,000 right? From say negative 30,000 to positive 30,000. Well, you can use two bytes to do that instead of, you know, eight bytes for a long, long int, right? You can save some memory there. You can use a quarter of the memory to do the same job. Now, you also have some options on how you want to define your variable. So as long as they're the same data type, right? So I can say something like int a and then define that variable a like that but if i have a bunch of ints that i want to define i could do int a int b int c in three separate statements 
or alternatively, I could do it all in one statement so long as I separate the variable names with commas. So this creates three variables. So you can do it in three separate lines or you can do it in one line or any combination. You just can't mix, right? So if I wanted to do a short integer, I could say short X. If I wanted to do an unsigned long, I could do that, right? But I can't, I can't mix them, right? Because X is a short and Y is an unsigned long. They have to be the same data type for you to be able to create those variables in one state. Now, one last thing here in C++, if you've got a literal value that is an integer, in other words, it doesn't have a decimal place, right? It's a whole number and it's going to fit within the range of one of those integer data types, then the numeric literal is going to be treated as an int. So this 13,000 right here is treated as an int. This negative 1.2 million or so is treated as an int. So the data type for the literal is an int, which is being assigned to numbers, which is itself as an int. 13,000 is an int that's being assigned to unsigned int days. Now you can force these literals to be treated as a different data type. So 13,000 is an int, right? And so this negative 1.2 million is an int, but we can control almost everything that you want in C++. So there could be the case where you want this literal to be a different data type than the int. So for example, you know, what if we created a long value, right? A long integer. And I wanted to assign to that a value 88. So the 88 is an integer, but the data type that that 88 literal is being assigned to is a long. Well, I can explicitly tell the compiler, no, 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 I want you to treat it as a long. Another example would be if you had a long, long. So you could do something like this. You could say long, long, and then create a variable named, you know, doggy. And then if I wanted to assign to doggy a long, long, I just say, just assigning 99 there, remember, this is treated by default as an int. If I want to be treated as a long, long, then I could put that LL at the end. Believe it or not, there are situations where you would run into where this becomes a concern, but those cases are outside the scope of this video. Okay, so now you know how to create integer variables. You know the differences between integer variables, the ranges of values that they can store, the amount of memory that they require, and different reasons why you might choose one data type of an integer over another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.